All right, welcome back to the RootBSD Technology Channel. Today, we're going to talk about how OpenBSD is based. Now, complimentary NeoFetch. I am running OpenBSD 7.0 current on my Hewlett Packard Elite Desk 800, and I'm running this on bare metal. I don't use VMs. I haven't used a single VM on this channel, so this is bare metal OpenBSD, and I'm uh, screencasting via FMmpeg and a base program called Aucat. Okay. And uh, right now I am running the development branch current and it is uh, kernel uh, 143. I haven't uh, updated to a new snapshot yet. I've been a little busy, but uh, let's get this started. So if you want to learn more about OpenBSD, the first place I'd recommend to go is the OpenBSD website. That's HTTPS OpenBSD.org. Fantastic website gives you all the information you need to know, um, including uh, supported hardware, uh, all the different features and technologies that it employs, a link to its source code tree, uh, downloads, and of course the frequently asked questions and the man pages are all available online. And the frequently asked questions is a great place to go for beginners. And currently on this channel we are going through the frequently asked questions. I will be doing the, the newest frequently asked questions video here soon. So uh, definitely look forward to that. Okay, and today I'll do, be doing my presentation in org mode on Doom Emacs. All right. So what separates OpenBSD from the rest? OpenBSD is free, functional, and secure. Only two remote holes in, a def in the default install in a heck of a long time. The OpenBSD project produces a free, multi-platform, 4.4 BSD, Unix-like operating system. Our efforts emphasize portability, standardization, correctness, corrective security, and integrated cryptography. As an example of the effect OpenBSD has, the popular OpenSSH software comes from OpenBSD. Now, OpenBSD employs uh, a, a plenty of advanced security mitigations and technologies in its source tree. Uh, one is Carl. OpenBSD will relink a unique randomized kernel every install, upgrade, and boot. The next one is Pledge. Pledge is a system call you add to a port's source code to restrict what system calls that program is allowed to access. It's kernel level sandboxing and you add it to the source code and it's compiled in. And it restricts, uh, basically it's like Linux's set comp but, a little, but much better. The next feature is called Unveil. The Unveil system call will restrict the view of the entire file system to a program. Chromium and Firefox can only see the downloads folder. So if your web browser is compromised by an attacker, he can only access the downloads, the downloads folder. OpenBSC has security hardened web browsers and ports. So if your browser is compromised, not only can they not see any of the file system except for the downloads folder, there's a very limited subset of system calls they're allowed to use because those system calls are restricted using pledge. And that's on a source code level that's compiled into the software. So it really restricts what they can do, even if you're if your web browser, because web browsers are a huge attack vector, a huge attack surface on any operating system, no matter what you're doing. And I do recommend to disable just in times on your web browser, disable JITs, because Theodorat said the biggest threat to um, home PC users is WXRX violating JITs. Uh, OpenBSD has priv sep and priv drop. OpenBSD base utilities in X11 make heavy use of privilege separation and privilege drop dropping, also called privilege revocation. Privilege separation ensures that certain utilities can't be leveraged to do things they have no business doing, like opening a raw socket, a reserve port, or a shell. So once your uh, a certain base utility does its, its exact function, then it'll lose those privileges afterwards until unless you rerun the program. Um, OpenBSD has a very strong malloc, that's memory allocation, PI, which is position independent executables, ASLR, which is address segment link randomization, library randomization, libc symbol randomization, and integrated cryptography into the network stack. So everything in OpenBSD's memory stack is being constantly randomized. Everything is trying to make it really hard for an attacker to get anything done. It's, the whole point is to make it a nightmare for them to try to exploit your system. Libre SSL. Libre SSL is a minimal and deep loaded SSL implementation. Now it's API compatible with open SSL and everything on the web, but it, it has a lot of old and unused code removed out of it. So this was after the whole Heartbleed fiasco. 
OpenBSD is much smaller than a lot of other operating system. It has less uh, operating systems. It has less attack service, less bloat in the in the in OpenBSD and base and uh, Xenocara. Uh, code is regularly uh, audited. So yes, they do audit and look through all the code for uh, the base utilities and for the kernel, uh, and they they're even looking to remove white spaces and anything. And they so OpenBSD is notorious for actually removing code, not adding code. Uh, security hardened X11 soft fork called Xenocara. Yes, we have our own uh, X11 soft fork, and it does run rootless, and it has it's using privilege separation and privilege drop. Uh, we have an in-kernel WireGuard wire imp implementation for uh, privacy, and we have other privacy tools like the Tor browser and ports. Uh, see my OpenBSD security features and mitig mitigations video, link in the description. Okay. S sound IO Daemon. Uh, we have a high quality sound server for musicians, streamers, and audiophiles. Uh, it has low latency, great performance, and fantastic sound quality, and it's super easy to configure. Now when I say streamers, this is kind of a work in progress thing, but OpenBSD devs have been working with upstream OBS. Preliminary support for OBS on OpenBSD has been added. It is available in work in progress ports. I personally just don't use it because I just, I find FMMPEG, I use FMMPEG and AUCAT from the terminal. I have a little script, it's super simple, and it works for me because I just don't want to deal with the extra uh, hassle because I'm very limited on my free time. Uh, OBS uh, using OpenBSD's Sound IO daemon instead of FMMPEG as it does everywhere else is faster, more stable, and less latent, meaning real-time real streaming will likely be more stable and possibly more performant on OpenBSD than anywhere else once uh, once some of the... they have, still have to sort out some things. It's not fully mature and ready. Uh, and I, I, I'm quoting uh, ATYH from the Fediverse. Thank you, ATYH. You're awesome. Uh, so... Uh, OpenBSD is keep it simple, stupid to the max. You guys, you guys love the KISS philosophy? OpenBSD is where it's at. It's easy to administer. It has great documentation. And the man pages are supreme on OpenBSD. The best man pages in the ecosystem. If there's something missing or it's unclear from the man pages, that's considered a bug. The tool chain is simple, it's straightforward, and there's less complexity. Anything you need to do in OpenBSD is generally going to be less complex and more straightforward than things you have to do in Linux. Or FreeBSD. So check out the source code at httpsgithub.com slash openbsd. It has a smaller kernel than Linux or FreeBSD. The entire OS, kernel, base utilities, and user land are compiled from one source tree. And most of the system is compiled with LLVM or uh, uh, Clang, the Clang compiler. It has a modern and robust file system. The FFS2 file system, which stands for fast file system, is faster than its predecessor FFS when creating a new file system as well as analyzing it with file system check. So especially on an SSD, like I have this system running off a of Samsung uh, Evo 8, uh, one terabyte SSD, runs really fast, okay? It was implemented two years ago. So anybody saying that OpenBSC doesn't have a modern file system, we just got a whole rewrite of a file system two years ago. So that's pretty modern. By Otto Morbeek, who also wrote our OpenBSC's Malik memory allocation uh, implementation, which is very strong, very effective. It uses 64-bit timestamps and block numbers, and it can go up into the petabytes in terms of size. Um, and it can do uh, features like full disk encryption, RAID, and uh, it's not as featureful as like Butterfile System or ZFS, but it has what you need for uh, smaller kind of things like home use and server use. Uh, it can withstand a beating. I've uh, never had data loss, and uh, my laptop that's running OpenBSD uh, has a has an old battery that I just haven't replaced yet. That's my New Year's resolution is to get a new battery for that thing. But all year long, I basically have had a 10 to 15 minute battery life. So I've accidentally power, had a sudden power off on that laptop hundreds of times, countless times, or when I, you know, kicked it when I was sleeping. Never had any data loss. Never had any data corruption. OpenBSD, the file system check is great. It always gets back up and running. And um, if anything goes wrong when you're installing or upgrading, uh, we have the RAM disk and, uh, kernel. And um, package add is very good at self repairing any kind of partial or broken installations. Okay, so you're, you're good to go. Even if there's lightning storm and power loss, you're not going to lose any data with OpenBSD. Okay, daily driver ready on supported hardware. So these are supported CPU architectures Alpha, AMD64. ARM64, ARM version 7, HPPA, 
uh, i386, LAN disk, Luna 88K, Mac PowerPC, Octeon, PowerPC 64, RISC 564. That's right, we have the new RISC 5 port and Spark 64. Okay, so right here I'll say that that um, these ones over here are going to have limited port support. So like you're not going to be able to run Chromium and Firefox on RISC 5. Uh, AMD 64 has the fullest port support. That means programs that you can run. And ARM 64 and ARM 7 have, and i386 have most, like, you know, 90% uh, port support. Okay? And so what is OpenBSD good for? OpenBSD is great for web development. Go up here. It's great for uh, coding and programming, whether you're programming with C, C++, Rust, Haskell, Python, Lua, D, F, uh, what are some other ones? Golang. It has full support uh, on all sorts of languages, whether they'll be web languages or programming languages. And also, OpenBSD is great for game development. We have Godot imports, or Godot, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, and we have tons of different games like game libraries that support uh, 2D and 3D kind of engines. So definitely if you're a game developer, OpenBSD is great, especially if you're doing some kind of indie games or, uh, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of options there. The, the cool thing about programming and developing on OpenBSD is that OpenBSD's compiler tool chain is very strict about memory management and uh, how you allocate memory. So any software you write on OpenBSD will naturally be uh, more secure than any software you write on any other system because a lot of other systems the compiler tool chain is a little bit more lenient on, about, on what you can use and the call system calls you can use and how you allocate memory. So I, I highly recommend doing your development at OpenBSD. Um, it's great for writing like if you're an author or you're you know or research or studies I know some people do scientific research and they do law tech and different things using OpenBSD. Um, and uh, it's great for entertainments. If you're an audiophile, the sound IO daemon is fantastic and very easy to configure. Much more simple than anything on Linux. Um, uh, if you or we have all the multimedia stuff like FMMPEG and MPV and VLC and Clementine and even more stuff than that, uh, Handbrake, all that stuff. So it's great for if you have a movie collection or you're into anime or in, in, or you, you know on the web browsers. Now we don't have a DRM streaming on OpenBSD, sorry. So if you want your Netflix and stuff like that, it's not going to work. But um, other things it will. Uh, FOSS graphic design, yes. OpenBSD is great for graphic design. We have GIMP. Uh, our, uh, Krita, Inkscape, Blender. So if you're into that, if you're a free software zealot like me, uh, but you're into graphic design, OpenBSD is great. In fact, uh, right here I'll show you that um, I do all my uh, graphic design for my thumbnails and my art in OpenBSD. And I am an artist, and uh, eventually also in this channel I want to do some stuff about uh, doing uh, digital art in Krita. Um, and we're getting there, you know, one step at a time. But, uh, but yeah. So uh, definitely, uh, now video uh, editing, eh, it's, it's not as good as Linux for video editing. Uh, Kden Live just takes way longer to render and it's not as performant as it is on Linux. It's way, because I think the Kden Live port that we have doesn't have GPU uh, support for some reason. So, you know, it's not there yet with vi uh, video editing or you need a, a pretty beefy computer to do it with a good CPU. So I won't recommend video editing yet, but it's getting better. Uh, security research and testing. Definitely, if you're into pen testing and security research, OpenBSD is great. We do have pen testing tools in ports. Um, it's also it's best also for server and internet applications. Like you can convert uh, hardware into a DNS server. You can serve HTTP. You can serve internet content with HTTP. HTTPD. Sorry. Uh, you know, run websites uh, on OpenBSD servers. Um, it has its own mail server called Send Maple, Send Mail to People Daemon. Relay D, uh, etc. So it's great for you IT guys. It's great for internet applications and server applications, and it's definitely going to be more secure. And you can actually sleep at night running, uh, and, and everything's going to be so simple. You know, just the administration is just so much more simple. Uh, so yeah, run BSD. What are you waiting for? You know, if you got an old ThinkPad, if you got some uh, some refurbished hardware like Dell and HP desktops. Uh, not everything is going to work perfectly. Um, I do know it runs on the Microsoft Surface Go. It runs on some of the, the Huawei Matebook, on the modular uh, framework laptops. Uh, it runs on some of the older MacBooks. Um, so there's a bunch of different soft, uh, hardware that it, it can run on. Uh, just The only thing is uh, no NVIDIA support, you know, just like Li uh, Linus Torvald said, FU NVIDIA. Um, so yeah, we definitely, if you want to uh, uh, run OpenBSD, I would recommend getting a Radeon an a or an ATI or an AMD uh, kind of vi uh, video card. 
And uh, you can support OpenBSD by donating to the foundation or purchasing merchandise at http openbsd.creatorspring.com. So definitely uh, check it out if you want to give money to OpenBSD to help the project, but you want to get a little bang for your buck. They sell great t-shirts at every release, t-shirts and hoodies, and sometimes also uh, posters. So definitely um, support OpenBSD and give it a shot and try it out because OpenBSD is based. That's why we call it open-based. All right, you guys have a great, great day. This is RootBSD out.